Hi guys, welcome back to Leaf Illusion. This, um, this particular reading is going to be just a general read for what the collective needs to know right now. I will go ahead and show you guys the area and my intention was to actually load this like to do a live on Facebook for this reading, but um, considering where I am, internet connection was not really a thing, which is fine. Um, I will collect the energy of this space, it'll be in the reading and then you guys will still benefit from that in the recording. But I will show you the area real quick. I love showing you guys the areas. It's just, for me, it's just a really nice way to connect in. It's just a nice way to share with you guys when I am able to get out and connect with Gaia in these ways. Because I understand that we can't always, and finding places in particular that don't have a lot of foot traffic is also particularly challenging. Um, so anytime I'm able to find a nice, beautifully um, quiet and secluded area, I really like to share it with you guys. So... You can probably hear the stream running in the background. It's just nice. And there's a couple crows or ravens sounding off in the background as well. So here we go. Isn't that just so peaceful? Oh, I really hope you guys are able to enjoy some peace from these videos. Um, so this one is going to be general read for what the collective needs to know, which means when you find yourself at this video, there is a message that will be here for you. And there's a lot to say, apparently. So. Let me zoom this in. So that we can get into the details. All right, so the first thing that is coming to my attention we had these four sitting in a perimeter um, not really touching the other runes. Tiwaz was kind of touching, but for the most part, um, it was standing free. So, the this whole reading is going to be surrounded by energies of Othala, Tiwaz, Manas, and Dagas. 
So we have legacy and inheritance, we have balance and justice and fairness, we have humanity, unity, collaboration, cooperation, collective, um, what is good for me should also be good for you and vice versa. And then Dagas is our um, enlightenment, it is our day. So it has the moments of twilight in the morning and in the evening. It is representative of a short cycle. So the concept that the movement energy within this reading is going to be moving relatively fast, uh, more of a short-term gratification or more of a sense of looking back and actually feeling that accomplishment because you can see results from the different things that you are working on. And in the rest of the reading, we do have Burkana and Ingwas. Burkana is our birch tree. It is our strong feminine energy, nurturing, nourishment, um, caretaking, and Ingwas is our seed energy. So it is the, the beginnings, the potential, the packaging, like everything is packaged and ready to go. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's nutrient dense. It's it has kind of that protective element um, because seeds have to be tough in order to move through the germination process. So we have both the feminine nurturing energy as well as the masculine action energy, but also tying into um, the heart chakra. So coming from a place of creation and connection and compassion these two coming out together that sense of yin and yang working well in a balanced capacity the next components we have fehu which is wealth um, it's mobile, liquid, fluid assets. It also represents cattle. Urus, which is our creativity, our endurance, our power center, um, sacral chakra type of energy, which is also the oxen. And we have... Ewas, which is the horse. Um, this one ties into our soul star chakra, so this one carries with it more of that ascension energy, the enlightenment energy, that connection to the heavens, um, things in that capacity, that companionship. Um, so all three of these coming out... Um, it's also horns and hooves, right? So we've got cattle, we've got oxen, we've got horses. Um, beasts of burden, they are, they help us do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, they, it, we have, they exist wild, but we also have domesticated them. So there really is a, There really is a connection to the earth in this reading, a real connection to being appreciative of the resources that are available to us. So that's what those three are coming through as. We have Ansu's, which is our communication.
We have Perthro, which is um, the unknown, it's fate. We have Lagus, which is our lake energy. It is introspection and emotion. So these three um, working together it is with this overall connection that we talked about in the beginning um, the legacies, the balance and fairness, unity, humanity, um, enlightenment, with communication and fate and emotion coming out also in the reading. This, this feels like Ideas and concepts that are happening within, that are happening internally, um, that they, the communication of them does need to be shared. It does need to be expressed. Communication breakdowns are going to prevent us from achieving these type of unity energies, this type of building a legacy and leaving a foundation. Um, with With that, um, I don't know why this is feeling like communication breakdown, um, but that is the feeling I'm getting, is that that is the one thing that's going to hold back the overall energies of the rest of this read. So it's almost a sense of like there being fear of saying things that are within your heart and in your mind, but there's almost a fear of sharing it with groups and with a collective. That's the sense that's coming through for this one. So being aware of communication breakdowns and, and how they might impact the overall, overall progress of, um, of movement and collaboration. We had um, so not as is the rune of um, necessity. It is that need for something to be happening, something to come into awareness, something to start, something to finish, something that um, needs to continue, something that needs to change course. So it's got that, um, that necessity behind it, that things cannot be static. They cannot, there cannot be a stasis. So we also have with that one, um, Jera that came out, which represents our year. So it's our longer cycles. It's our harvesting period, knowing that there's a cycle that the work you've put in to build something does have a payoff point. It does have a time when there will be something to stand on. There will be that legacy that you've built um, in order to give you that platform to go forward into the future for others to stand upon, to move towards um, greater progress. And we also had August come out. And August, the... So this one is traditionally the rune of protection. Um, not in the sense so much that something is after you and you need protection. It's more the sense that um, like your guardian angels are looking out for you, that type of protection. That you don't always have to worry about everything. Um, that your energy is not best served worrying about every little thing. That there are that you have divine forces that are working on your behalf to help you progress and move forward. 
The interesting thing about this coming out, though, it also represents the elk, depending on which, um, which pieces of history, which pieces of, which documents you consult. So with it being the elk, we have then all four of the hooved animals and horns. So there is a lot of earth energy in this. With these coming out, we have the birch tree and the seed. They're just... There's a lot of earth energy. And this read is running a little bit long. So apologies about that if you're hoping for a quicker reading. But this one has has really strong feelings in it for me. So I'm just, I want to make sure that I do the reading justice and I don't skim over anything and dismiss it. Um, so with the earth energy, in the realm of earth, that is our physical body. So this is a reading that's also going to be talking about the importance of physical care, making sure that you're you have adequate rest, that you're staying hydrated, that you are doing little things like getting out and getting fresh air, getting sunshine. Um, even if it's not a lot, even if it is just, you know, walking down to the mailbox or um, walking around the block or just going out to the park, anything like that to just give you a few minutes to ground in and reconnect with Gaia. Um, there's, that is going to be the biggest thing that's going to help move this energy forward. So that's what we have going on. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of earth energy, very grounding very protective, very nurturing. Um, but earth energy can move slow. Earth energy can have a longer manifestation process than the other elements. And so there's also there's also a sense of being patient with yourself. So that may be some of this communication breakdown I was feeling. It may also tie into just um, being patient and giving yourself grace to process the things that you're going through. So that's what we have for this general reading. It's um, I don't often get readings where one element comes through as feeling very predominant. Um, but this one is just really, really, really heavy on earth energy. So good time for grounding, good time for daily meditation practices, um, breath work, just really, really pulling yourself into an embodiment state where you're in the moment, where you're anchored into what is now, what is present, and using that energy, those synchronicities, the signs and symbols that you're seeing in the moment to help guide you and move you forward. So that's our reading. Thank you so much for watching. I will let you know into the video stuff. If you've liked the video, please um, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, follow my pages, do, do all the things that will help. And I am sending you guys lots of love. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.